How's everyone doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm great. <laughs> yes, the birthday party is over. Now I can rest. Ooh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Pulling up some, uh, some facts so I have them ready. We'll start real soon. You guys do anything interesting uh, today? Oh, well, Rena, you had that party. but uh... Did You guys, I was just talking and I was a mute. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and everybody was quiet and I thought, oh, they're hearing me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I know you asked me. I just posted something in general, like to pe for people to come to join the event. And I was gonna tag um, everyone, and I accidentally just tagged one person. And I, I had to fix that real quick. <laughs> but yeah, the birthday party was great. Everything is clean again, and I'm happy. And I'll get this rolling soon, probably, and just give it like another three minutes. Were there any um, questions or anything that people are coming in here with? Or like if anyone feels like they want to share why they came here like maybe like if they wanted to learn something in specific or or if they just wanted to hang out or what's up what's up ski what's up fam what's up how much glad to have you exactly are you waiting for some more people to hop in before you get started oh yeah yeah i was just gonna give it till 120 i might start sooner out I, I mean i was also just pulling up a few a couple facts and things about some beneficial compounds well zach you already have a question that chat okay, i should probably look at the chat oh is meat low vibrational mm, that's a good question i mean i will i'm not gonna say that it's like really low vibrational you know it's there's so many factors and things that can go into it um you know a lot of it i feel like depends on your situation and um and how the animal was you know what their life was like and how they were killed and how everything was prepared all the energies that you know who cooked it and what kind of energies did they put into it when they're cooking it and you know there there's some you know and was this animal treated with antibiotics and hormones and all these chemicals and eating grass that has chemical fertilizers and herbicides and you know all this kinds of crap that can go into it i will say that meat at the end of the day it's dead food you know it's not you know it's it's been killed and it, as opposed to a plant which is living food like you can plant a plant in the ground and they'll grow you know they're not you know it's living food and they can carry this energy you know life energy i definitely feel that meat does carry uh, a kind of energy as well and um and there's a lot of people you know i feel like as people's bodies increase in vibration their bodies tend to want meat less and less and they just want like lighter and lighter foods and eventually you're just kind of living off light maybe eat a fruit sometimes for pleasure but yeah so it depends i mean i i don't judge people that eat meat i used to eat meat three times a day for the majority of my life i just found a, a better way of living that it just makes my body just feels better and my meditations went deeper and it just improved my life yeah I, i've noticed that too like the lighter you get you're gonna eventually want to stop eating meat the lighter you get there's nothing wrong with me it helps everybody on their journey if you spent majority of your life eating meat it takes a like sometimes for certain people it definitely takes like longer to break that habit or eating meat but you can start incorporating vegetables and stuff into you, you know if you're trying to think in like meat is no vibe and also i didn't just like i didn't cut out meat in a day like for me i started by just eating meat once a day instead of like two or three times a day and then eventually i started eating meat even you know less and and actually my brother had went vegetarian and then i was like okay i think it's time i just need to go vegetarian now and so it was like a really it's a really big process um there for some people i mean now Nowadays, I actually do still eat some like dairy products and egg products and things occasionally. Just like it just depends. Like you won't see me like regularly buying these types of products. I'm also not too strict with myself, but um, I'll always choose a vegan treat over an animal product treat because it's uh for one thing it tends to have a lot better energy. There was a time where, and I still probably could if I wanted to, but there was a time that when I would eat animal products that I would get vision of these animals you know being like tortured and like suffering and all these things and it was just awful and it made me really not 
not want to eat it, especially like when it comes to dairy products, because, you know, although there are ways to to get dairy and more humanely and treat treat them better, it still is a little bit different than like, say, an egg, which, you know, eggs, they don't necessarily have to be fertilized. Chickens, they might live a great life and just run around and they're laying eggs and then you just go and eat their eggs and energy. You know, I noticed the energy from eggs can be it's not the same as like a plant, but it's not dead the way that like a steak is in my it's hard to explain but yeah yeah and so eventually i i went from that to i went from being vegetarian to cutting out you know i stopped eating cheese and drinking milk and things like that eventually i started trying to cut out like all the products too because i was still eating like cookies and things like you know they put milk and eggs and so so much stuff hi macklin hey zach we're just talking about like the vibration of me you know transferring to a more plant-based lifestyle if that's what you're looking for and stuff like that do you have anything to share on that topic for me it just happened as i raised my vibration certain foods became harder and harder because my vibration just wasn't aligned to them. their vibration kind of hurt me and so yeah, like while I was in Peru, um, like my body was actually asking for more. It was asking for more, kind of. I mean, I think I probably could have gotten away with not eating it, but it was like my body was ready, more willing to accept more. And so I was eating a lot more eggs and things like that. And it was also very cost effective down there. But then at one point I tried to eat a burger and my body just straight up rejected it. And it was my body wanted to like really bad. And, you know, I just felt I was trying to connect with my body energy and my body just like wasn't having it they wanted it out of me but i really didn't want to throw up so i spent like maybe an hour or so just trying to doing light language and stuff trying to transmute it and asking angels and everyone for help because i was just like laying in my bed and i just felt awful i probably should have just let it come out of my mouth i just didn't want to for some reason but um yeah but yeah and so i'm not totally against eating meat but it's just you know teach their own and you know as as you progress you'll probably start to as you your body raises in vibration you'll start to notice your body does doesn't want certain things and yeah and there's so many you know and i feel like the way that the animal is treated and killed and everything can, and what they eat during their life can really make a big difference on the vibration of that food and either way something that i do when i'm eating plants or animal products or anything is i always try to i like to show gratitude for the food and like showing gratitude to mama gaia for producing the any beings who've labored to bring the food to us because you know a lot of these foods go through you know there's human workers and different you know people that work to produce the food and even like honey the, the bees they produce they help produce the food and so I like showing gratitude to all of them and when I'm eating an animal product trying to like send love to that animal and sending love and enlightenment to their soul and holding gratitude and you know not just not just being like gluttonous about it but being like grateful like you know like thank you for this nourishment and now we'll touch on oh and i could say a little a little prayer that i like to say i guess like i a lot of times before i eat i like to just say thank you all for this delicious food and drink that helps us to nourish our bodies so that we may continue to learn love and grow we thank you mama gaia thank you for always providing protecting holding us keeping us loving us guiding us teaching us aligning us for our highest good thank you source for flowing through us guiding us teaching us aligning us and calling on all Oh, you know whatever friends you want to you know say like oh all my all my angelic family all my families all our friends from the gfl and inner earth and everyone uh, a lot of times i like to just call in like everyone depending on how much time i have and just holding gratitude for everyone and and like and then i like to ask them for help with blessing cleansing activating my food for my highest good and holding love and gratitude for any beings who put energy into this food that put energy into bringing this food to me holding love and gratitude for their soul and i really and usually at the end i like to you know um, visualize and you know see my guides and we're all working together to like charging up this the food and it's like the food is filling with light and any lower vibrations that were in there are just they're getting transmuted and released and then my food is much better oh and also then when you're eating the food and you know, being conscious while you're eating it and being grateful as you're eating it i feel like makes a difference as well and of how it affects your body because they even did studies on it like you can eat a healthy food but if you 
think that it's really not good for you, it can have negative effects on your body. And so it's, you know, just like eating this food with this intention of this is nourishing me, this is strengthening me, this is, and oftentimes I like to speak intentions into my food, especially with certain foods, like say like spinach, I like to ask spinach, like strengthen my body, like this strengthening energy, you know, helping me to nourish my heart, you know, and all the, I notice the different foods, the different plant consciousnesses, they can help with different things and they might be more attuned, I guess you could say, to helping with certain things. I'm not sure what word to use, but, um, and so that's something that you can do to even take it a step further is to connect with the, the consciousness of the food. And so there's a lot of nutrients, uh, da, 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 let's see. And also food can affect your DNA. Like there's a lot of foods, like processed foods that can damage your DNA. And as we know, like our DNA is like the keys to who we are and, you know, our genetic expression and us tapping into our gifts and things deeper and, you know, raising our body's frequencies and things. And so eating food that's going to damage your DNA isn't going to help with, you know, tapping into your gifts and everything. I like to eat things that are positive for my DNA, like that have good sources of folate and vitamin B12, magnesium, zinc, iron. Those are all important for synthesis and DNA replication. Um, and then folate and B12 are really important for maintenance of DNA methylation. Vitamin C and vitamin E, manganese, selenium are really helpful for preventing DNA oxidation, which is like oxidative stress, which is oxidative stress can translute, trans, translate to like inflammation and tr premature aging and things like that. And it comes from toxins in your environments and things. And a good way to protect from them is with antioxidants. And vitamin C is a really potent antioxidant. Everybody should read their ingredients on their food. There'd be a lot of chemicals and a lot of things that people use on a daily basis that they don't. They don't yeah, that's an, yeah, that. that's an amazing point. No, you're good. That was actually, I'm really glad you said that. that that's a really good, that's a really good point. Like I would recommend reading like any label that like anytime you're eating a processed food or anything, I would read the label. And usually if there's more than like five or so ingredients, then it's going to be, you know, more processed than you really want. But also, you know, looking at what it is, like, is it xanthan gum and titanium dioxide and all this stuff that you can't pronounce? And I will say just because you can't pronounce it doesn't mean that it's necessarily toxic because sometimes they're just using like a scientific name for something. But um, reading that stuff as opposed to like the first ingredient in like, say, say the first ingredient is chickpeas and then it has garlic and clove and apple cider vinegar. And, you know, it just has real ingredients like foods that you you know of. It'd be a lot of um, chemicals and stuff that, that it would be like a big chemical name and it, you just know it's synthesized in the lab. Like, it's, there's no way nature made. Yeah, for real. <laughs> but yeah, I try to eat, I, I don't like to eat especially anything like with Red 40, any of these artificial dyes and stuff, that stuff's awful. And they actually found links between like the chil like children being diagnosed with ADD and things and them consuming large amounts of those artificial colorings and things which i still don't fully understand what all this what all the add and everything is because also you know children with add tend to be like gifted and having higher dimensional access and things as well i mean yeah i feel like that's a conversation for another day like yeah you're right <laughs> um anybody want to say anything about any health things they want to work on or they want to learn about i did wanted to ask like how like what is the most like what are you your guys's suggestion on how to get like what is your favorite ways to get the best protein without having to consume meat for me i like to um go with things that fill me up more because like i realized that it don't be like our body makes a lot of protein just by doing the daily exercises and like doing a couple different things every now and then like your body can make its own protein so i just realized it'd be like how filling can this meal make sometimes like sometimes you just need a really filling meal and i usually tend towards like i've been going towards now is avocado sweet potatoes pistachios quinoa it feel quinoa really is a big thing that fills me up like it 
it fills me up and I don't really see in protein as that because like our body synthesizes protein so what our body's gonna have to transmute the protein from whatever you're putting into it like our body makes most of the chemicals that we need from our food and stuff but like our food just amplifies it from our choices but I would say like if we're trying to like just gain more muscle or something because that's what people usually associate protein with like not to losing like anytime you make a transition on like a lifestyle you're gonna lose some type of weight it's inevitable but you you're gonna fluct like you it's gonna go back to a health because there is amount of like denser energies when you do have if you do eat a certain way for a while and then your body does get lighter and it doesn't want those denser and you're gonna lose weight and then gain it if you're just thinking about protein about like making sure you get enough protein i would just say look for like feeling feeling foods foods that fill you up and make you feel full when you eat it yeah and like stuff like like legumes beans seeds legumes are can be really nutrient dense and like really protein dense even like sesame seeds can have like 20 grams of protein in a serving of sesame seeds um i, I recommend like toasting them because they can be a little hard in the digestive system i mean for some people but um really sesame seeds hemp hearts are amazing two yeah, tablespoons about to say of hemp hearts hemp hearts hemp seeds yeah two tablespoons of hemp hearts have has like 10 grams of protein. Corella, which is, it's a microalgae, which is, a, it's a superfood. And it's one of the things that I recommend to people that are trying to go vegetarian or vegan, because it's really health, it's really high in B vitamins, especially B12, and then it's high in iron, which are two things that can be harder to get if you're not eating meat. And then it also has like ome healthy omega-3s, like DHA, EPA, which are associated with like healthy brain function and things. And that can also be harder to get from plants because most plants uh, contain omega-3s in the form of ALA, which your body then has to convert into these other forms. But uh, when you eat animal products, they already have it converted. But there's some plants like chlorella that they already have it converted. And chlorella by weight, uh, I believe 100, ser 100 grams of chlorella has roughly 50 to 60 grams of protein. So it's extremely protein dense. It's also actually one of the most, it's one of the plants that has the most dense uh, most chlorophyll by weight compared to any other plant and chlorophyll is associated with like binding with heavy metals and toxins and things in the body yeah I drink really amazing. chlorophyll is definitely a great addition trying to get some type of chlorophyll in your body is like that was the thing I was doing for a while like it's like plant blood in a way like, that's how yeah. I kind of feel about chlorophyll yeah you know I was looking I was looking at a thing and scientifically they found like chlorophyll and our blood are actually really similar like on a chemical level and that the chlorophyll can travel through our blood and bind with toxins and then bring them out of our body so it's really incredible like when kids ask me at my job like what are you drinking i'm like i'm drinking chlorophyll and they're like what's that i'm like it's plant blood but yeah and then other protein sources i i really like chicken or kind of probably one of my favorite legumes but i also really love lentils which are extremely protein dense uh barley is a whole grain and barley is very protein it has a lot of protein as well. What type of barley products do you use? Because I usually try to stay away from wheat. Yeah, and I do get that. Although, like, I just I just get, like, whole barley. Like, I... Because I noticed that there's a difference between, like, this GMO wheat that they make the white flour out of and then, like, actual flour. Like, the gluten content is so high in this GMO wheat that that's a part of what's causing the gluten intolerance. Because if you look back, like, you know, especially, you know, if you look back people didn't really suffer from that um as much at least in the past you know before they were gmoing it and everything it had less ingredients in their process and less chemical and like the the gluten content was significantly lower um and so there's a lot of whole grains there's a lot of grains that do contain but just in varying degrees um and gluten is associated with inflammation and in some uh, some things uh but it is also protein it's it's literally just wheat protein um oh. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about GMO food? Somebody said something about GMO. Food. Um, I think that it depends because I mean, really, pretty much all the food that we eat today, pretty much all of it is GMO to some degree, just through like selective breeding. You know, we've genetically modified them just by choosing which genes we want to express. But then there's a whole another level of that where they start doing it in a lab, and you know, and it with the, all these chemicals and things. And you know, I'm not saying that that's inherently bad. 
bad, but I feel like it brings on more risk because it's just like a less natural way of it. And we just don't, like, we just don't understand it as much. Like there's a potential for good there because say they, say they GMO'd, genetically modified some kind of rice or some kind of plant to be able to grow extremely easily and per, and have all the essential nutrients and everything that the body needs and have tons of health benefits. It could literally change the world. Yeah. And, um, I had even thought about fruit about that. I heard people saying not to eat GMO fruit. If you really think about it, right? GMO fruit is still going to be like lighter than other type of like foods that you might eat. So yeah. like, even though it might be genetically modified, it's still a fruit. It still had to grow. Like that's the one thing I had to take in myself because people were trying to, I mean, I was hearing about staying away from GMO foods in the beginning of my journey. And I was really just trying to buy only seeded things or like certain things. But if it's not applicable, easy for you to follow, you make you can make it harder trying to go for it's only non-GMO food, you know? As long as it's like a fruit or something, like you know what it is already. GMO or not, still had to grow, had to touch soil. And people get so sucked into like the, oh, it's GMO, it's evil. Apples are GMO. I mean, the way that we see apples now, they didn't exist like this in the past. Like they've been created to, you know, they a lot of the foods that we eat, they've been genetically modified to have more calor calories and be less nutrient dense. And that's part of a uh, part of like the increase of unhealth unhealthiness and things that people are literally getting less nutrients from their and more empty calories, which is something I like about being in Peru, which I'm not there anymore, but I had access to foods that were less genetically modified and more nutrient dense, you know, these different some tropical fruits and things like the granadilla and some other ones. But it's really incredible. I do recommend for protein shakes. You go for plant protein because the most of the protein like i would say and read the ingredients there or like try to find the label on it or something the ingredients i see on like the protein powders you would get from like a lift like a um gym or something with whey they're packed with straight gluten it is crazy how much they can like slide certain things that's not good for everybody in there they slide a lot of damaging things into there and pack it with like chemical nutrition instead of like tr having the protein actually in a healthier manner but it's still protein at the end of the day that's how some bodybuilders and stuff look at it but if you're trying yeah. to be healthier and more conscious of your body go for the plant protein read the ingredients and you should be good that's what i recommend because if you still want to use protein powder you might as well get something that's going to be lighter on your system because that weight i'm telling you the way i remember like I, the whey protein powder like i don't know what it's up with that but i remember you taking it when i was younger and like yo like it definitely is a difference when i started taking um animal i mean plant protein um a little while back but there's plant protein out there and they got different flavors like that people get creative so you can find it yeah the one one that i really recommend is pea protein he like they make pea protein powders because peas are i don't know i think they're technically a legume or uh, i'm not totally sure to be honest but i think they're technically a legume and they're very nutrient dense protein dense so they'll make like a powder a you know, protein powder with that i've also gotten hemp protein powder which i like i will say one thing to be mindful of when you're eating like hemp parts and stuff uh is just that some sometimes depending on how it's produced and everything it can contain some heavy metals i mean not necessarily but it, it just depends and i mean just like pretty much all plants can because it's just coming out of the earth and so but like particularly the the one that i that i'm mentioning it because of is like manganese and manganese is a really essential nutrient for the body but when you get too much manganese then it can cause brain fog and do things that you don't necessarily want and so like the hemp parts they contain something like the ones that i get have something like 80 percent of your daily value of manganese in in one serving so i'm just mindful of that because i used to eat like a huge amount of the hemp parts every morning and then i was starting to realize i thought that maybe it was contributing to a little bit of brain fog that i was having i mean i'm not, I'm not trying to scare anyone about the hemp uh you know and heavy metals because pretty much all food can contain it because it's just naturally occurring in our soil and that leads me into another topic that's really good um you know binding with toxins and heavy metals and things and we already mentioned chlorophyll and a great way to get chlorophyll is through things like spirulina and chlorella and eating dark green vegetables especially like leafy greens like kale are really great spinach swiss chard swiss chard is amazing and those also contain lots of other health benefits and they contain 
The leafy greens are also a really good source of vitamin K, which is really important um, for your body. Uh, it helps, vitamin K works with vitamin D, works to like metabolize the vitamin D essentially, which goes into like building strong bones and your DNA and lots of stuff. But so other things that can bind with toxins and heavy metals are bentonite clay. Um, and that's a naturally occurring compound. I believe it comes from volcanoes, but I'll double check real quick. Um, it's often called Called, I think some people, it's also called like Indian healing clay or something. Ski, don't you have it in, like you were saying it was yeah. something clay? Yeah, um, Indian healing clay. Yeah, that's definitely, um, yeah, Benazite clay and Indian clay the same. Definitely a good binder. Or definitely for good for your skin too. Like if you ever do want to do clay mask, like you want to do a deep cleanse, a clay mask. Cause you even can eat it too. Not eat it, but like take it in a capsule or something. Like I literally like to just, like I used to like mix it in with my water and i still do that sometimes and then and then it's just like yeah i'm getting these toxin you know this stuff in my water that's binding with toxins from the food that i eat or whatever i'm getting or it might still have in my digestive tract or whatever um and sometimes what i do now is i just like to fill my mouth up with water and then i just put a scoop of bentonite clay in my mouth and i just swallow it all because <laughs> that's just is it just easier for me to do it like that you can also use it you know for skin care and for taking care of your teeth and stuff it's a great source of calcium and so it has other trace minerals and things like magnesium but it bentonite clay it forms from volcanic ash yeah i've used bentonite clay as toothpaste for a while and like i was thinking about like a toothpaste a natural toothpaste like cloves coconut oil and probably some bentonite clay and so another really powerful way to detox um especially with heavy metals and microplastics and things is zeolites and there's many many different forms of zeolites and types of there's a lot of different forms of zeolites like in some places they have zeolites where it's like something that you just drop into your water or something um and that they'll like mix it with their water and do that occasionally and it helps to keep their body i, I can't fully speak on it because i don't have experience with it but um helps with detoxification and everything but the kind that i use are this i get it in like a liquid spray that i spray in my mouth and that there's submicronized zeolites and so they're the zeolites the particles are small enough that they can go throughout my whole body they can cross my blood brain barrier and then they can pull the heavy metals and things out of my brain you know and out of my whole body and that can help with decalcifying your pineal gland and you know getting rid of brain fog and all these things you know they also find that parasites tend to release heavy metals in your body so if you've struggled with parasites it might be a good idea to do heavy metal cleanses too you know and i was really amazed at how much you know just detoxing heavy metals and things can increase my mental clarity increase my psychic abilities and everything because all these toxins and crap part of what they're doing is that they're keeping our vibrations lower and yeah. keeping us from activating more and the zeolites they're actually a natural they're naturally occurring too they come from volcanic ash as well they're negatively charged and they bind with positively charged toxins and stuff in your body and yeah. you've actually used it i was about to say um i just sent the instagram page and like she uses the lights on her kid and she noticed a big change in them like because like parasites really be attacking us since we come out eating this type of stuff like all the heavy metals build up over time but um like yeah it really it does have effect on your behavior like when you start detoxing and like getting these heavy metals out of your body profound changes within your like awareness i would say because like there's a lot of things influencing that's, that's internally that got acquired by eating certain things or other type of things too like other ways that heavy metals got in your system yeah for real and the zeolites can also help with binding like with radiation and things it's really interesting they actually used zeolites to help clean up um look like waters that were contaminated with radiation uh after chernobyl and so they use the zeolites to help to clean up radiation and stuff i believe i heard that they were also giving it to the dogs that were there and some of the people that were there that were exposed to a lot of radiation and stuff and that it was helping them as well and when you do a zeolite cleanse um you know different people might have different experiences with it but i always recommend to like go into it as clean as possible because it can be really intense detoxing heavy metals and stuff especially if you've never done it before and so it can be really good if you're drinking detoxing teas like burdock and dandelion uh rose hips and hibiscus 
hibiscus and things like that like regularly first and eating cleaner and then when you go and do it the, um as well you know the zeolites they bind with stuff you know i don't fully understand it but it's like it, sometimes you need more binders like the bensonite clay is also a binder so that way the stuff doesn't circulate through your system too much and make you feel really sick and so the the bensonite clay it just basically helps it all kind of like helps with the binding and helps with pulling the stuff out of your body like the first time i did the zeolites i was not feeling so great like i was getting flu light symptoms What's and my that? liver was hurting and oh, then okay. when i started using the bentonite clay which is what my teachers that taught me about the zeolites told me i needed to do then i started feeling much better and the detox symptoms went away that was just like the first day that i tried it that it was, I was about a to day say, can be very powerful detox symptoms is definitely something that happened but that that comes from the heavy metals and stuff being inside of us though it's gonna happen like longer down the road if you didn't face it that if you faced it now you know if we ever do experience detox symptoms don't don't just stare away be like oh this is not for me or it, this literally happens like i remember when i first started getting the certain herbs and stuff there was a period of time where i didn't feel too good but like i knew i was i'm getting better because like why did i why when i shifted i started letting a whole bunch of mucus go out of my body like through runny nose and stuff like that and i'm like i wasn't even sick before i started taking this why do i feel sick now but that, that's the detox your body has to let it go somehow and like say if you are having a really intense reaction to the zeolites then i would recommend stopping the zeolites and waiting for your body to recover before you do more you know because there's no need in overloading your body and over stressing your body because like when i was first doing them it really i mean it it, it was almost like some flu-like symptoms at times and my mom's friend that she is she did a different type of zeolites than I did. I believe she used the raw zeolite powder, which is not in like a submicronized and it more focuses on your digestive tract and around there in tissues, blood, cells, fat, organs. Um, but, uh, and she was getting like really, really sick. And so she was afraid to do any more of them because she just thought that it was, it was dangerous. But I feel like she just wasn't well informed when she was doing it. She wasn't using these other binders, things like charcoal and bentonite clay that they they help to bind with the toxins and help to pull it out of your body so that way they're not just recirculating. Um, and there is substantial amount of literature and high quality human animal testing to show that zeolites are safe and effective. I could share some uh, some links on that. But yeah, they bind with heavy metals, toxin, toxin, toxic heavy metals, chemicals, VOCs, radioactive toxins, plastics, free radicals, and they do not bind with vital nutrients because you know you might find that some things that are binders that they just kind of bind with like everything or they bind with a lot of things and you don't necessarily want them to be binding with the things that you want to keep inside of your body you just want them to bind the the bad stuff and so some things that you may notice after you working with the zeolites would be increased intelligence iq learning speed memory heightened intuition more happiness and mental clarity less environmental and food sensitivity, deeper meditation, deeper sleep, disease-free longevity. And so it's not, it's also not a one-time thing. Personally, I like to do it. I mean, I do it pretty intuitively. Uh, ideally, ideally we could do like a few of them a year, a few cleanses a year where, you know, where I do a little cycle where I'll do it for say five days in a row or less. It just, just depends on how I've been eating, what my intuition is telling me and everything. Nowadays, a lot of the time I'll just do it for one day and I noticed that that's, you know, one, two days that that's all I really needed. But I'm very mindful of the things that I eat. I've done a lot of the cleanses already. But yeah, and be mindful that detoxification can be stressful to the body, can be taxing on your organs and cells, you know, do it intuitively and with proper lifestyle and supplement support. Yeah, I noticed that like um, with zeonites, they definitely get a lot of liver. Like it does a lot of liver cleanse. You said liver. I was like, wow, like I haven't taken zeonite yet, but I'm like i already know a lot about it and i've seen like i just see it and i'm like yo this is definitely powerful but i'm i'm i'm, I'm gonna get to using this soon because i'm i definitely yeah. use it in some of my products coming soon when it comes to like deep parasites because that's one of the cleansers i've had and i use like right now i'm using like black walnut and like wormwood but like i definitely want to get some benazite clay and a little bit of zelenite powder in there <laughs> 
that would be yeah i got i'm about to make a seven day cleanse or something i got to it's a great idea yeah for real yeah and on yeah because like the the liver it's one of the main detoxifying organs in our body that it helps to like process you know and you know pro uh, so yeah helps to process and detoxify and it can end up like storing toxins and heavy metals and things um mm, 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 i'm just looking for um, does anyone have any questions i'll look at the chat i haven't looked in a while oh thoughts on borax that's a great point um so borax is really good it, it binds with heavy metals and things as well and it's really good also for de decalcifying your pineal gland like it can help with uh with, yeah with decalcifying your pineal gland it binds with toxins and things in your body you can do a borax bath that's a great way to do it um i'd recommend looking you know do your research on it do your due, due diligence you know making sure that you you know make the bath in a safe way and just if you're i don't know a huge amount about borax and how if you can consume it internally or how that works i would recommend doing your own research on that so that way you are doing it in a safe way drink borax but i definitely seen like um body cleansers like like bath bombs or something that have cleansers in it that have yeah in it. here i'll list i'll go through and mention you uh oh first i'm just gonna try to find this this spot where i had some stuff listed about borax hello chester let's see okay i'm having trouble finding the thing about borax but i found something else that is going to be good it has to do with gut health and toxin protection so in the last 30 or so years, there have been a lot more of these compounds being circulated in our food, water, air, medicine, environment in general, you know, all the paints and the, you know, paint and couches and there's VOCs all over the place. So it's really hard to get away from them. I'm not trying to scare you. Um, you know, that's why it's good to live a detox lifestyle because then you'll have the most longevity, you know, to, you'll have your body, you know, will be able to do what it's supposed supposed to do and repair itself. So some things that negatively impact your microbiome and bring you, you know, mess with your energy and your body, eating non-organic food, taking antibiotics, drinking tap water and groundwater, you know, unclean water, being exposed to Wi-Fi fields, taking pharmaceutical drugs. I will say on the on the realm of pharmaceutical drugs that everyone's at a different place in their journey and that there actually was a time for me that I needed those drugs to because I was very because I was so far in the other direction that the pharmaceutical drugs they helped me just to you know, I was struggling with drug abuse drug addiction and you know my my hormones and my my neurotransmitters and everything was out of balance and the drugs that they're prescribing me helped me to find get back into balance enough that I could then be able to improve myself more so everyone's at a different place in their journey um, but I will say things like Adderall and stuff can definitely matter with your psychic abilities and they've linked it to ner nervous system damage so some things that can help you to heal your digestive tract comfrey tea like comfrey contains high levels of al allantone Alatoin? Dropped out of the... He might be having some problems. I liked what he was saying. Is this a... Not every Saturday, but we have classes pretty often. A couple of... Every week, every once in a while. Not, not really randomly, but like, if it's like one person might be doing the class on the 17th on the class, on, or you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, typically people just either announce an event that you can see at the top, and sometimes it will be randomly join a call. But usually it's open to anybody talking, but for some reason, uh, a lot of people uh, have like will will you know op up into you know muting themselves I guess but you don't have to you can uh, you know talk yeah but he was saying like detoxing is what I heard when I joined oh detox symptoms or detox yeah I mean we could continue in on that just like you know whatever we can oh. come up with. I say for detox symptoms they're inevitable but people might not realize that okay I might have to feel a little bad so I can get really good yeah. part of it also That's says you know the I think my my uh, ground for a little bit. But... My bad. Um, my audio. Did you do you guys hear what I said or I, no? no. I was saying about detox symptoms, they're like inevitable because since we detox, right, our body has to let go of these toxins that we've been holding on to for so long. That that can be looking like a runny nose or like you feeling like you have, but that's actually your body. Like if you knew you were just in good health, your body starts giving 
you detox symptoms after you just taking a herb or something that you know that's supposed to help you. That's how you know like that herb is powerful and like it's cleansing you at, actually. Yeah, but also be mindful of the side effects that that herb can bring. Like I always do research on any herb before I take it because it can affect different people and different genders differently. You know, maybe some people don't want to take certain things if they have liver disease or if they have diabetes or whatever it is. When it comes to disease and everything, I believe all diseases come from you like every yeah. disease known so-called disease is I believe it's coming from mucus in some way yeah maybe well scientists will probably interject and say well I take like you know relatively like mushrooms and, and like how, how they spread you know and they like have all these different symptoms you know as well I wouldn't say it's only mucus but the mindset like you know has and creates for themselves the mindset can create mucus as well yeah that's a big part of it and that's also like mm-hmm. Engage in, in the behavior too, uh, you know, like cleaning of the soul becomes self conscious and they, 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 you know, they feel clean already, you know, and it's just grasping that being self conscious and clean uh, at the same time. Also, moving onward because not everything that we come in contact with is within our control or even in our knowledge. When you're walking down the street or something, I would, like, they add to foods if it's not listed, and um, it's a big part of research. And there's still so many, you know, seeing this. The, the basic just the mindset and, and then yeah and some, sometimes like the amount of mucus can affect your mindset and that's another thing we were talking about the parasites and the heavy metals yeah and so and personally I, I like what, what resonates more for me is that all disease originates from energy you know I feel like it all just comes from energy you know all yeah. disease all everything basically how oh, Bonsky oh, said every oh, disease comes from mucus yeah I think it like comes is mucus it is- like source of it but like it's how mm-hmm. it if you think about it all right mucus not might not be the source the source might be heavy metals right the heavy metals create the mucus because your body's not supposed to have them in there so your body protects itself by creating a film of mucus um yeah. for example you have an ear infection that's literally mucus in your ear you have yeah, an eye I know, infection. I'm at a ear infection <laughs> bro, I'm, bro that's hilarious bro, I'm, I I'm had not, some medicine I'm that, kind uh, of was on point with that bro. but yeah, yeah you you're on point with that <laughs> if you have an ear infection bro that's literally like a over like you know mucus my medicine that, that we used over. or that i used it was like some mucus like just releasing and like just declogs all of your yeah in the nose and it was for the ear so like i learned about that just like a few weeks ago so. and our sinuses is like really important our science goes from like our top of our eyebrow to like our cheek in a way like just our sinuses can hold so much mucus and people might not think they're backed up but like their face can be just from your sinuses it's how you just your nose like i realized mucus definitely does have like such a role because our body protects itself with mucus. it will make a mucus film just to protect you while you have this um, heavy metal in you like even a certain type of blood pressure disease literally it's like a film of mucus around your artery film of mucus in your veins people that have arthritis it's literally mucus in your um tendons that causes you to hurt when you move your muscles in certain ways or move your tendons i would say like it's all energy at the end of the day which but like if you're just trying to just learn about it right now like energy yeah. might be right for somebody right now but like this mucus the mucus like okay what's the energy that brought that that would probably be going to it deeper but like if you just wanted to learn like about the disease in general like it's literally some type of mucus in some way like you have a pneumonia fluid in the lung like i can go on for days about like mucus what about cancer cancer, like, cancer is, cancer is- just your DNA, your cells that can't control right, the replication, right. and that and can be you caused can by certain that, things. Right? Your, cell, your cell was damaged, right? And the mucus decided the cell when the the cell is damaged, right? It creates a film of mucus because it doesn't want to damage other cells, and it shows me that even cancer is a mucus because it'll literally clump up a blockage or tumor. That blockage and tumor or something is like a, a film of mucus that's being protected in it, and it shows me that cancer is like your body putting all the toxins and all everything into one big pile it definitely shows me that yo your body's trying to show you that we got more life into you but that's a deeper topic because people have definitely misconceptions of cancer and everything because we don't have these type of conversations about these don't yeah like cancer is literally
literally an energy that you can you could literally connect with the consciousness of cancer i mean i feel like that goes for a lot of different things and because like even these some some of these disease names especially like um nervous system diseases there's literally no cure so that means you are the cure because these things can be cured like there's a lot of nervous system diseases that i've realized that it could be like some mucus in your brain or something that's or like some blockage that you might not realize that literally making you your way into bad health because there's no cure for nervous system diseases because it has nothing to do with mucus at all it deals with the person yeah a lot of the things that people use for nervous system diseases like um from chinese like traditional chinese medicine like reishi and a lot of these medicinal mushrooms can really help like superfoods and things adaptogens yeah and they help with your brain and how your brain functions so that proves it even more a certain type of yeah there's a bunch of mushrooms that yeah um, i'm a big advocate of um lion's mane um reishi and um what changa uh, was it not changa um changa. Changa? Uh, yeah ch yeah is that what it called changa? i think so. yeah yeah c-h-a-g-a -A. yeah i accidentally said changa that was yeah. the, wrong, the wrong thing yeah even yeah even go to alcoholism alcohol holds a spirit too yeah Ooh, you speak all spirits oh i'm not no i have a couple notes on lines mean i could share uh it powerfully boosts nerve growth factor in BDNF activity and BDNF is brain derived neurotropic factor and it's almost like think of it like miracle growth for your brain like stem cells for your brain I could explain it more if, if you guys want but um it, it basically so the lines make it help with nerve regeneration throughout the whole body but especially in the brain and they've actually found that in animal models um it's a long time favorite of royalty and Shaolin monks it supports meditation and generating chi in the body. Um, in Japan, it was referred to as Yama Bushitake, Yama Bushitake, which means mountain priest mushroom. Uh, and it's, it's a reference to its known effects on centering the mind and increasing spiritual awareness. And there's like, a, it's probably one of the most researched mushrooms that like you can find a ton of like information on it. I think reishi and lion's mane are like the most researched in turkey tail. Yeah, turkey tail, I'm pretty sure has an opponent. Oh. I don't know. They actually that's the mushroom I was thinking about. Yeah. That's, that was the one I was thinking about. Like, turkey I literally tail. was, yeah, I was thinking about turkey tail because I definitely made a lot of different teas with turkey tail. Yeah, turkey tail is amazing. They literally found it helps to fight cancer. And yeah. that they found that when you use it in combination with chemotherapy, that's more effective than mm -hmm. chemotherapy alone. I yeah. mean, uh, honestly, I even like there's so much other ways to go about these type of therapies because, like, I've seen people just like, it will be way healthier before they do chemo and then they do chemo bro and it's like such a shock to the body and then people don't know about zeolonites and all these type of things but if they did they would literally affect the cancer in some type of way because our body has a lot much capability of fighting any disease that we have just remember we got to be in homeostasis like an actual balance with ourselves yeah like if if someone got cancer and they wanted like my help i would immediately start getting them on or well, get them like intermittent and fasting like doing some yeah. fasting and stuff yeah. to help like destroy the old cells and then yeah. work with getting all these mushrooms like turkey tail and reishi to like fight the cancer um and then also something like alchemical gold and uh, you know all these and all these things will work together to like assist with like repairing your dna and healing your dna and you know returning your body to it to its to its divine expression facts facts like that's very true that's the wait, one wait. thing Sorry. say about holistic medicine like there's definitely so much more ways to solve a problem instead of going the doc like certain doctor routes because sometimes the doctor route be a, like surgery sometimes you'd be like like there's certain surgeries that you do may need to do but like there's there's other ones that's like literally a choice like even when it comes to wisdom teeth I, be I believe the lie that was told to me telling me that i need to take my wisdom teeth out that was one of the most painful experiences that i, I had just with my my body bro honestly like me it's a business tricked, me getting tricked to thinking my jaw wasn't my divine given jaw wasn't big enough for my teeth that naturally grew what is this like you know it's literally a business it's literally teasing. Right. think about it though why would it not hurt did it hurt when you teed as a baby and then i just started connecting the dots i'm like wow they got me like they i gotta regrow my teeth back now 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 i gotta send myself deeper do my do my health journey yeah one of my dentists he was trying to convince me he was like oh we should just take 
take out all four of them. And I was like, well, before our, my old dentist told me I might just get out two of them. Uh, and he was like, oh, well, you might as well just take out all four. <laughs> and, and, you know, actually your jaw ends up like, like I feel the difference where like I have my wisdom teeth on my lower and it's like I felt and I felt the difference after they took them out. It was like my whole jaw just felt like weaker. Yeah. And I had to do jaw exercises and started um, learning about tongue posture and just like mechanics with your jaw more because I realized that I took a lot of power out of my my jaw muscles because I believed a lie. And they tell you, oh, does it hurt? Yeah, it's going to hurt a little bit. You're teething. Like if you remember, if you could ever see a baby teeth, they definitely cry, but doesn't mean they're taking their teeth, their teeth are growing in, you know? And it's good to keep in mind, like they literally, you know, for all these teeth they're taking out, they're getting money for it. You know, it costs thousands. Your insurance would pay them thousands of dollars to take it out, take out your wisdom teeth your insurance has to pay for the anesthesia and all the doctors that have to be there to help with it yeah and even after the math they're gonna put you on some stronger pain relieving drugs for some people they don't need to be using those and for myself for one i didn't like i never really wanted i never liked pain relief drugs so i just didn't take it at all and even doing certain type of surgeries that it's like they give you an option like you don't need to do it but it'd probably be good for you you should look into the natural way to solve it immediately just because like they kind of it is the money thing a little bit sometimes they might recommend a surgery for you and you don't need a surgery like when it comes to certain type of spine things like you literally it's gonna work it's gonna take some work just like if you did get the surgery it's gonna be painful afterwards but why not put yourself through pain t for growth in a way like for instance you had spinals like you wanted they recommended you for spinal surgery for whatever back problem you had you might want to look into things like qigong or like things to straighten out your spine you know and it might be painful but i can assure you it's not as painful as going through back surgery like for me i i have a herniated disc in my lower back they and it's possible that it's like degenerating as well or something and so the only thing that they can really do for that is to give me these cortisone shots which help to release inflammation and decrease the pain and if those stop working then they would want to do a spinal fusion and basically you know put a put a metal rod in my back and i'm just like fuck that <laughs> So I try to, you know, I try to like bring, I try to heal my back regularly and do the physical therapy exercises and do the stretching and, you know, be mindful of how I lift things and, you know, do all the stuff that I can do. Oh. And it's helped immensely because there have been times where like I basically couldn't walk or like I'd be walking with a cane and I'd still be in excruciating pain. But now like I can do squats, I can do all, you know, I do all these exercises and things. I'm actually stronger than I think I've ever been. Do you think um you will ever get surgery for your back or you think no i don't i don't plan on getting surgery maybe i'll let some arcturians do surgery on me but no yes no. sir <laughs> yes sir see and that's one thing i realized when certain when it comes to certain things like surgery definitely not always the answer like if you if you had something amputated or something like that you needed to reattach then that's different i recommend you trying to get your limb fixed if, if that happened to you like oh I got, my finger got cut off and then they, they can reattach that's different i will go through that surgery but like if it's like a surgery that's dealing with like oh if you're not if if you have to get something um cut inside of you or something like an organ cut or something like even tonsils i've heard people that got their tonsils it makes no sense because their tonsils are literally designed to be a certain type of blocker that keeps certain things from going inside your um, throat so it's literally this is a weird one my sister she she had her tonsils removed got mono got one and, sick and again mon what, is mon what is mono mono is some type of some type of bacteria created a blockage of mucus and again did your organ need to come out because some mucus no you need to do some work with yourself regarding some health choices and lifestyle choices to mucus out and you will no longer have mono and this is people are so quick to like do it because they don't have a lot of information so this is like these are the tough conversations we have to have because yeah, this was also like years ago i know i understand i understand and not it's just yeah and also that's, keep that's in mind like these doctors they just do what they're trained to do you know some of them they yeah, might no, like, think that they're helping you and they just don't know any better and yeah, literally the books too tonsils are a lymph node like they're literally lymph nodes they protect you from getting the full body sometimes you know sometimes yeah. they can protect you by becoming swollen or sore because your body yeah. probably in a state already well that's what happens and, and i'm not totally i'm not totally against western medicine i feel like it definitely has its place especially when it comes to like chronic um oh, you know a few things like say you actually 
actually get injured or something like and you need you know, like you need a surgery you know if you're you cut your finger off or something they can reattach it or you break your you know if something happens yeah, that you don't have the the cure to or that you're not you don't have access to the way to treat it then western medicine can really help and it can really come in handy like when you get like severe injuries and things and no, that's that how that's some people end up dying in both sides of see where the leaves have sprouted and yeah that's true that's too true. but yeah. like i would say like there's certain things that like people can easily work with themselves on but they go the medical world like it, but we see that more often than the, we see that more often like people just going to the doctor for like things that they can like start treating on their own rather than people like dire need they didn't like, try everything herbal every exercise and everything you know like that's talking good. about uh don't think those you, yeah people those like are... a lot of people don't even try get to even try other things like they weren't yeah, never, no, like i was i was on ritalin a lot of stuff like throughout middle school and high school and like didn't take it throughout college senior year of high school i got like didn't want to like take mind altering substance whenever i was on that like regularly my personality it's not needed and there's other ways to go about it growing up but you were also saying like there's some surgeries my dad he had a knee replaced now he's he was almost not even able this replaced. was like some injury back some stuff that from this western and, world some stuff that's just uh, like, what, like, what, like what do you mean replacement like they replaced it with like an artificial knee or like they had like an actual donor to re yeah, like, not, a, not an actual uh they had it's you know his, okay. um, his joint in between the joint i forgot what the the soft part okay um i i think i know i know exactly what you're, what you're talking about but, but again it wasn't there anymore and so he needed a thing to joints not rub against each other like he's old now at a young age we have the ability to do i mean work. even even if we do get older we still have the capability once we have the certain knowledge to act on it because i can definitely say like the, the surgeries i realized that people shouldn't get brain surgery i think it's knee back and brain surgery just because like these things are just so vital um uh, like a lot of people probably um might be um more backed up because i don't believe anybody's overweight i think people are just generally backed up because our stomach is extremely extremely small our intestines are is what the, the largest things is in our stomach like in our own abdominal region like it's our intestines that really yeah but also on that note like some people can have actual like you know issues with their metabolism like thyroid disorders and things that can that correlate with their bodies literally holding on to more fat yeah, you I know mean, because that's like there is still like the difference between brown fat which is a healthy fat you know in moderation of course and then there's other then there's like the light fat the yellow Fat. but if you think about it right even saying thyroid right that's a hormonal thing so that that's not that's not um that's a fact you're dealing with your hormones you're eating things you're you're having a lifestyle that keeps your hormones unbalanced that has a mucus film over your thyroid that's causing your thyroid to act improperly polaris are you saying so you need help with quitting intoxicants um i would recommend meditation is meditation and breath work are two really big things um breath work section for you but my yeah because breath work is really yeah breath work is really it's like something that you can do like you just do it and then you're in an altered state of consciousness and it can you know and you can be make it so much easier like where you're overflowing with these bliss chemicals and all this amazing stuff breath is the step to constantly breathing subconsciously like you're entering that sub that's a beautiful also, thing whenever you get into it i have a really big this a really big good key on this that really it's it's an amazing so switch your relationship with the intoxicants so instead of using them unconsciously and just like hitting your vape while you're just doing whatever be conscious every time you use it so when you hit your vape go into a meditation and use the vape to help you meditate and i'm not saying to like that i'm endorsing vaping but i'm just saying switch your relationship to it and then over time you might just not want to vape or maybe you just use the vape in a different way and way less and the same thing with weed like every time i use weed i i connect with her spirit and i thank her and i ask her to help me with activating and doing different things and so if you don't want to then that's fine but i'm just saying that that might help yeah it, it might help bridge the gap if you're having a lot of trouble stopping um and so your nervous system hurting that might be some detox symptoms from the nicotine potentially 
I would say a lot of um a lot of definitely comes more from vaping, like a lot of your fluid, like a lot of fluid in your lungs that can hurt people. That's a, you know, uh, there's a really easy if y'all have another kind of like breath work kind of meditation. Oh, cigarettes. Go ahead, but uh, where every consciously think this body and every exhale very slowly. I'm not even the mind, just doing that over and over again. You should create. I mean, I mean, so I used to, um, in my case, when I was uh like so I started my friend at the age of 16. He introduced us. We used to uh you know um you know partaking and um uh, you know eating stuff that's legal here and um it's not the wall, it be. I used me to a secret one time and i felt nothing from it but then eventually it led on to like me getting a uh, vape and then always thought like always knew like from the moment like i started like i just kept in mind like i don't have you know i don't have to you know like this this isn't making me sick right now but then it got to a point where i was getting tired of it because well first of all i would see videos of people just buying like throwing away all these vapes and stuff and then I kind of noticed, oh, I was kind of doing the same thing. And it's like, oh, well, better thing. And so then, then at a point, like, if I thought about it, I kept in mind, like, I still don't have to. But stop thinking about it. I would feel kind of sick. And so then there was a point to where I kind of got tired of it. And then um, just, like, the buildup of, of, like, that that momentum. Just, like, me, you know, just putting these, like, thoughts in my head. You know, even, like, on purpose, you know, even though it wasn't, like, like, really, like, oh, like, I'm, like, sneezing, coughing, throwing up. Barfic, you know, it's just like the idea, you know, it, it made it really easy for me to just, uh, you know, okay, like take take this step and I'm gonna go ahead and like, I'm not gonna like mess with this uh, BS. It's not necessarily my journey. It's a journey. It's not a journey of my life away, but I could be doing something better. If it could be sooner, I, I, I would think it's a waste of time. Oh, consuming what? Just like rebuying and like going to a store every so often to buy like a vape, like nicotine vape. And, and they find that those vapes actually they negatively impact your microbiome as well so that's actually making it harder for your you know, that might it potentially could mess with the bacteria that's going to be helping to produce you know the positive neurotransmitters that make you feel good and you know if you are and if you always had an abundance of these neurotransmitters then you might not even feel like vaping because you just you're just high on life you're high on yourself how do you stop compulsiveness um i'd say reprogramming that meditation Meditation, meditation, plant medicines, asking your guides for help. Um, it's like a, it's like you, you're reprogramming yourself and have those hard and there, and you know, have those moments, those hard moments, like instead of doing what you want to do or what like something is telling you to do, then do what you, instead of that, follow your intuition. You know, like if you feel like vaping, then instead go into a breath work. What's the best detox for your lungs? Um, I also I recommend I have a lung cleanser that I make myself and I can just tell you what it has in it. It has Harataki in it, which boosts your oxygen intake by um three hundred percent. And also I have um something called melanin melanin i can make a tea out of it make a capsule i'm about to drop the herbs in there so you so you can see it for yourself but yeah harataki and melanin that's a really extremely good detox way i'm not going to say like harataki is not bitter so if you want to that's why i make capsules of it for people because i know sometimes they can't handle the bitterness and also polaris depending on your age you know there are some i, I don't typically it just depends on which one and everything but like i know of some alchemical medicines and things that can really help with addiction and like plant medicines that can help with addiction like like there's... Yeah, how old are you Polaire? you could type how old you are bro You're... yeah the reason why i don't always especially certain ones like i'm familiar with they can affect your like your endocrine system and stuff and just you know depending on your age and how your body is you might not want that yeah we're just trying to help recommend the best solution that might help you so if you did feel comfortable with saying your age that was cool that's cool but um, yeah my best uh, i i recommend transforming your relationship to them and also like if you have you know instead of doing always vaping or smoking when you feel like it do something else that makes you feel good like breath work or meditation or qigong or go outside and get some sunlight and or go and go hang out with friends that are a positive influence on you and that can support you in that you know you know if you're hanging out with all these people that are always smoking cigarettes and you know smoking weed like it's nothing and it's going to be harder to stop because that influence the sun gives you a lot of energy even when you're not high it gives you energy when you're sober um polaris yeah and i don't know if you ever take like magic mushrooms or something you know even just taking a small dose of mushrooms
mushrooms and going into a meditation and asking the mushrooms and your guides to help you with the addiction and to help you or whatever you want to call it to help you with these habits and helping you with you know these things uh, that can be very powerful and all it takes is that intention you just gotta ask you don't even have to do the mushrooms you can just start asking your guides like please help me and you know they want to help but they need your permission i just sent something about sun gazing i got a whole little thing about eye exercises and sun gazing if anybody was interested but yeah dude if you're if you're hanging out with all these people that are just smoking a whole bunch it'll make it a lot harder than if you're hanging out with you know friends that they don't recommend that developing a better relationship with smoking that's one thing i had to do and i realized i just can't smoke with everybody anymore this is a sacred medicine and sometimes you don't need to smoke with certain people certain polaris do you ever take magic mushrooms yeah they're really you know i, I recommend using them in a safe way and like personally i always recommend start off small you can always take more but you can't take less you said you, know, you said taking yeah. a little bit and then just meditating off that's the you best i want best to, to I, laced Damn. weed what is laced weed bro what do, what do you have in it laced with yeah to be honest there's people around where i live that they lace fentanyl in the weed and shit because that's just just a problem where i live how do you know it's laced polaris and why do you still smoke it it's cheap it's not worth it if, if it's gonna hurt you yeah you know that might be part of why it's hard to stop it is because it's you know they're probably putting shit in there that's making it more addictive and you said that your nervous system hurts when you stop bro that literally sounds like a detox you know you might be they literally might be making you dope sick and like take it from from a junkie or an ex-junkie you don't want to be dope sick man because it's awful it's just like being like forgetting what it's like to be happy it, it's horrible and your whole body feels like shit yeah man so you should you should stop using that shit man i really because um, that's like one of the worst things that you can for, for your health and for everything uh, where do you live at polaris if you're in america i got some legal websites that can ship some natural weed to your front door that's literally legal by the government standards because i definitely don't want people smoking <laughs> yeah man and some of that legal weed online it's actually can be pretty affordable and, oh, you're in South South Asia. and the thing is like they're showing you the lab result and like there's a hundred percent certainty that you're never going to get laced so where you're at in southeast asia do they have any traditional medicine systems or anything you know that they you know like i, I don't know ge geology that well or whatever it's called um but oh you're in india you, you might have uh, access to ayurvedic medicine you know and these different medicine systems and people there that can help you in a natural way but in india weed isn't le illegal i didn't think because i know that they actually in india there's holidays where they smoke where they use weed like they make a, a drink they call it like bong or something and it's like a it's a weed drink everyone gets stoned and you get pure shilajit for two dollars you might as well be using shilajit every day yeah Ooh. shilajit can help with that for sure with addictions and things i would just say go on a lung cleanse though because that's what it seems like you need to do why not i, I mean i make shilajit with my water all the time i take shilajit raw and i take it with water you're in india right. so you might as well get some hair talk you might not have heard of it before you might have oh also Pol hair. polaris you might have heard of no hair taki i just said i sent it at the top i'm gonna tag that's it i think shiva took on um, hair taki as well yeah i did hear of some deity i think it was shiva that took it you might also know of go to cola it's really popular there too they sometimes just eat it you know eat the leaves like in salads and stuff and it can help fight depression and different things because it helps uh um it helps keep your body from what's it called keeps your body from breaking down the acetyl acetylcholine which is the neurotransmitter it also deepens meditations it's neuroprotective and enhances bnf so it helps grow your brain it's, it's actually you, some people you, call you, it an herb of enlightenment you back though i live near mumba never make silly do well. yeah if, if melanin grows outside that's easily a way that you can detox your lung are you allergic to it i never really heard of melanin allergy and i i one thing i can say also is you have inflammation in your nose because the mucus from smoking I and I know that from experience. I mean, did you, you ever try drying it out? The pollen might come off of it in the drying process. But you're supposed to make a tea out of it anyway. But you should try Hirataki though, Blair. Yeah, and see if you can get your hands on some kind of like a, like some sadhu medicine. Because there's like, there's traditional alchemical, you know, there's people in India, sadhus and people that make these alchemical medicines that they've been making them for a long time.
time and that they help with a lot of different things it's like really powerful medicine yeah i even think some type of some allergies are definitely um like certain type of allergies to pollen and stuff i definitely mucus in your body too That's one thing i realized that like if you eat more food dyes and stuff you tend to be more allergic to certain things i mean that's what i've noticed but i'm speaking for, for myself that I, I never really had allergies but my brother and sister do and i see that my sister does eat more like things that have heavy metals and stuff and she has way more allergies than my brother that doesn't eat as much heavy metals or like certain types of chemicals because if you think about it allergies is kind of like a disconnect with nature somewhat somewhat just if you think about it because like you're allergic to nature going outside makes you feel stuffy and sick but that's one thing i realized after like i used to have horrible seasonal allergies and me making this holistic change i no longer have allergies cholera so you know it also you know if you really want to stop using this stuff like shadow work like you said you were trying to escape yourself if you got to become at peace with yourself you really wanted to stop like when i was you know i was using the drugs and things a lot i had to like come to you know i mean my relationship with addiction is different than a lot of other people because it actually started like you know i it, it developed into a dependence it started as just like a weekend thing and then it just developed but ultimately i wasn't like happy with myself as i was i needed something else to like feel better and also it was helping me because well i, I also I, w I was having a lot of trouble at home and you know abuse from my father and things and you know helps to drown out all that kind of stuff and so something that it actually getting away from you know I, I have a relationship with my father now but i have my boundaries with him too so we don't live together anymore i go and you know when i go to see him it's my choice to see him and it's my choice how long i'm around him and that definitely helped me because then it like i wasn't exposed to you know these energies and things that were triggering me to want to use the drugs that's something that you might want to look into like what are your triggers and then you know see if you can transform your relationship to those triggers or try to take them out of your life if possible ideally you know transform your relationship to them because like now i look at my dad with gratitude and you know I, I try to alchemize all this stuff even though he still triggers me sometimes i try to hold a higher perspective about it self-love self-love bro and also also then try to hold the higher perspective about it you know instead of getting sucked into the thing you know which is what the archon and the and these beings lower vibrational beings what they want you know hold a higher perspective and see you know see what's really going on and just have to hold love and hold gratitude for the lessons and things if you can and protect your energy you know you should i really you know i'm feeling like you have some type of darker beings or something that might be affecting your energy at times so you might want to create a shield of like gold or platinum light around you and you know set the intention only beings aligned with the highest degree of light and love may interact with my field and you could also say any negative energies that come towards me are repelled and sent back to the sender and yeah i'm not totally against tobacco like i was saying it's like it's about your relationship with the tobacco you know are you using it in an unconscious way where you're just smoking all the time because your body has a physical dependence and you know you're just kind of doing it on a very 3d level <clears throat> or are you honoring the plant and honoring their spirit and using it to connect deeper with yourself because like for me tobacco can really help me with grounding and cleansing my energies releasing cords and attachments and just getting clear yeah so you should just smoke that weed from your garden and don't lace don't smoke that lace stuff man because that stuff's no good yeah it's never worth it yeah and also the tobacco it might just help you to you know not get so attached you know like even when this stuff is you know like when i work with the tobacco i might still be aware of all this stuff going on but i'm less like in it you know i can it's easier for me i'm just more clear and if i want to personally i don't i don't try to control my mind too much i, I don't necessarily believe in that um i believe that that is something that is valuable to learn to do to control your mind but ultimately i would like to be at peace with my mind so that way i don't have to control it don't have to use my energy on that freaking fork that is a big one <laughs> it is and i feel like it's something that a lot of people forget or like a lot of people just something that can help to realize that you don't have to control it just come at peace with it meditation it's an amazing way to do that i'm not even sure if you like could control it completely i'm sure you could like you could do it a little bit but i don't know if, I'll, if you could do it completely and i'm not even sure if you'd want to so i definitely think your approach is probably better yeah i i, I don't know yeah i, I don't know i i guess it, it probably it would be really hard to really control your mind but even like you know saying comparing like a month you know some people when they're talking about meditation they're like just stay at this single you know like do this 
this and just think of nothing. And it's like, well, then you're trying to think of nothing. You're you're still trying as opposed to like in some some forms of meditation where it's just about surrender. And mm -hmm. it's like you're not trying. Yeah, you're I just going, observing your mind stream. You don't have to chant a mantra every breath. I think mantras are really powerful. I don't necessarily, you know, if you're just trying to do it every breath, that might. That sounds like a lot of it. freaking fork. Did you have any other questions or anything related to the meeting or I'm glad you came here, by the way. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. I just woke up late as fuck and I'm hoping there's a recording so I can just go back through. That's how I usually do these meetings because I can just go through the recordings like really fast. But uh, I guess you can just, if you don't mind reviewing about some of the stuff y'all were talking about, it seems like I was scrolling up through the chat. Y'all were talking about, I don't know how to pronounce it, zeolites. What's in there? There's yeah, plants. the zeolites are naturally, they're naturally occurring. They come from volcanoes um, or like from volcanic ash and they bind with heavy metals, toxins, microplastics, you know, all kinds of crap, really. Um, they also found it can help to bind with like radiation and get rid, you know, they used it to help clean up radioactive water after Chernobyl. And there's a lot of different kinds of zeolites. Like you can get the zeolite powder, which mostly targets like your, you know, within your torso area, like your, your organs, your digestive system, a lot of your tissues. Um, or you can get submicronized zeolites, which is I, what I recommend because they can cross your blood brain barrier and they can go all so they can pull from your whole body and so then they can help get the toxins and heavy metals from your brain and you know these things that are causing brain fog and then it can enhance your psychic abilities and different stuff because then your you know your brain and your faculties aren't being clogged up your pineal gland is more clear and and if you decide to take the zeolites i recommend taking them with a binder something like charcoal or bentonite clay because then that helps with it helps the toxins to bind and not uh, circulate throughout your body, which can be uncomfortable. And so then it, it binds with the toxins and then your body, you know, then it makes it easier to flush them out. I think I do remember you saying you need to like research this stuff pretty carefully because people can get sick from it. Yeah, I mean, it's good to do your do some research on it. But yeah, I mean, especially the, the main reason that I was saying that is because like I've heard of people that they don't take it with binders and then huh. they, they end up feeling really sick. And also, you know, maybe some people take too much or they're or if they just weren't ready for it, like I would recommend doing like cleansing with herbs and teas first and even during it, you know, so that way you're already more cleaned out because detoxing can be in general, detoxing can be kind of intense depending on what kind of detox you're doing. I'm just writing some notes about it so I don't forget. You're good. So is this protein that y'all posted in the chat something y'all all agree with that you recommend? Because I've been looking to get some uh, better protein up my diet a bit yeah i've seen the ingredients I, I like the ingredients in there i never tried that specifically and i really don't use protein powder like that no more that looks official to me i like the ingredients on it okay yeah i like those ingredients too yeah although personally i'm not i'm not super into all the powders and the i mean i'm okay with smoothies and stuff i you know i believe in eating fruit in its natural form uh -huh. um you know partially because your body processes it differently you know as opposed to when you have like a juice or a smoothie it's like your body gets like a hit of sugar because it's like already the cells and things are already broken open and so you're just getting like this hit of sugar as opposed to where if you eat the fruit whole then your body has to like process it and like open up the cells and everything I got better but yeah i prefer like getting my protein from things like lentils hemp parts um i like having barley sometimes um i i don't really eat gluten in excess but most of the time because there's like some other things associated with it but so when i do have gluten i prefer to have it you know from whole grains things like barley and rye or sourdough is also a good alternative to white bread and if you're getting like non-gmo flour it's very different from like the bleached white flour like i actually have some here or it's it's real flour Let's see if i got it in the bag over here okay i'm having oh we already took it out of the bag and put it in the thing oh that reminds me though a flour alternative that you can use is a uh, chickpea flour yeah Super I love, love chickpea flour yeah it's great i will say it doesn't done. i will say it's not like exactly the same like if i try to like make pancakes with only chickpea flour it doesn't necessarily work that great but i like to do it with like maybe you know instead of using 100 percent flour of like wheat flour i'll use like 
you know, 25% chickpea flour. And that actually works really good with the pancakes. What's up, fam? Yeah, I got the truth. My old, my old, but like, I give it. Right now, we, we talking.